so well uh, good afternoon my dear friends after long time we are meeting once again so on behalf of iamms and tamil nadu i am dr sabrina travichandar consultant pulmonologist fine so today we will discuss uh, one case scenario and based on that i'll be giving you some ideas what could be the questions asked from that case so let us start our case is a 30 year old female so who is a homemaker belonging to a low socio economic class coming from a north chennai in and from an uh, uh, housing board area with complaints of cough for the past one month and there is also fever for the past one month patient is also having slight breathlessness for the past one week history of presenting illness patient was having cough which was productive in nature and it is there for the past one month each patient is producing yellow color mucopurulent in consistency not mixed with any blood and patient is also having breathlessness for the past one week which was in serious in onset and gradually progressive not associated with any orthopnea or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea and the same time patient is also having a fever especially more in the time of evening she is able to feel she is having a loss of weight and also a loss of appetite and there is no any other constitutional symptoms past history she is a known case of diabetic type 2 diabetes she is on regular therapy but her sugar levels are not very well controlled and no any other significant past history personal history it is not significant in her case family history is not significant contact history her neighbor was having tuberculosis nearly 2 3 months back and she is also on anti tuberculosis therapy so on general examination patient was conscious oriented to time place and person then she was ill built and not well nourished no pallor no cyanosis no ictus no pedal edema no generalized lymphadenopathy and clubbing grade 1 was present vitals everything seems to be normal then on examination on patient inspection slightly movements were found to be reduced on the right sided mainly in the infraxillary infrascapular regions on palpation all the trachea is in midline even the apex beat was in uh, the normal fifth intercostal space half inch medial to the mid clavicular line confirmed but on pal patient one finding was that that the movements are decreased in the right side and infraxillary infrascapular regions the vocal fermitus is reduced in the right infraxillary infrascapular regions in percussion everywhere the normal resonant node was present but there was a dull percussion node present in the right infraxillary infrascapular regions on auscultation normal vesicular breath sounds were heard all over the lung except in the right infraxillary infrascapular regions you were able to hear decreased breath sounds and same time vocal resonance was found to be decreased in this right infraxillary infrascapular regions examination of other systems cardiac system s1 s2 heard no murmur no gallop no rub per abdomen soft no any organomegaly and in cns no focal neurological deficit seen so this is the entire summary of my case so at this point the examiner will ask you sir can you just summarize your case then your summary can be like this so my case is a 30 year old female who belongs to a low socio economic class who is a known case of uncontrolled diabetes who is having a contact history of tuberculosis presenting with complaints of evening rise of temperature loss of weight loss of appetite cough with expectoration for nearly 2 months and patient is also having breathlessness for the past one week okay on examination grade 1 clubbing is present movements are reduced in right infraxillary infrascapular regions vocal fermitus vocal resonance is reduced in right infraxillary infrascapular regions breath sounds are reduced in right infraxillary infrascapular regions dull note on percussion on right infraxillary infrascapular regions so what could be your differential diagnosis in the first introduction class itself i said your diagnosis must be pointing the pathology must be pointing the anatomy must be pointing the etiology so here from the way i presented you people could have easily found where is the anatomy where is the pathology where is the etiology definitely anatomically i am damn sure this case should be an pleural effusion i think most of you will agree with me but some may argue that sir this patient is having a productive cough why are you saying it is a pleural effusion yes i am saying pleural effusion is main but who knows there may be even a parenchymal lesion who knows 
there may be an underlying parenchymal lesion such as some cavity or some consolidation changes or some tuberculous infiltrates which is producing sputum so along with that there is a pleural effusion are you understanding so parenchymal along with pleura so since the parenchymal involvement is there maybe the patient is producing sputum okay so this is my anatomical diagnosis definitely parenchymal involvement will be there either in the forms of infiltrates or some consolidation definitely pleural effusion is there pleura is involved no doubt in that okay why what are the positive findings on my examination to say pleural effusion is there here starts my examination points of questions what are the points on inspection i am feeling an decreased chest movements on palpation i am confirming my decreased chest movements on vocal fermitas i am asking the patient to say 99 99 i am able to see an decreased vocal fermitas same thing when i am doing with stethoscope that is called vocal resonance that is also decreased in that particular area and same time i am able to what in percussion dull note is there so that is also showing that the patient is having an effusion dull note in percussion and even the breath sounds are decreased so all these combined together definitely i can say it is effusion please my dear students don't get confused that in effusion the trachea will always be shifted to the opposite side the cardiac impulse the apical big impulse apex bit will be shifted to the opposite side it is not mandatory in all the cases so what it does it mean means trachea is over here apex bit is over here right my case is an right sided pleural effusion for this effusion to push the trachea to the opposite side will a mild effusion push no because my patient is having only breath sounds decreased in infra axillary and infra scapular areas so what does it mean only in infra axillary infra scapular areas means the effusion is mild so a mild effusion never causes shifting of trachea or apex bit and many times some people do mistake so the trachea shifted to opposite side but the apex bit is in the normal position how is it possible which is downmost apex bit is over here trachea is over here water is coming from down to up so which the water will first push water will first push the apex bit to the opposite side okay so if you are saying trachea is pushed to opposite side means it means it is a massive effusion my friends it is a large effusion if it is a massive effusion definitely the cardiac apex also should have been shifted to opposite side do you agree or not so please understand this basic points before committing big big mistakes in exam understood okay so my case is a case of an right sided right sided pleural effusion i can say definitely it could be minimal that is mild to moderate effusions mild to moderate effusion because only the infra axillary regions and infra scapular regions are involved next etiological diagnosis what should be the etiology patient is of what diabetic that means she is immunocompromised patient is having contact history of tuberculosis patient is living in country like india patient is living in an housing board area where the where there will be very less space the space normally 110 square feet is required for two people whereas in housing board area not even 90 square feet will be there for two people so overcrowding will is, is there she is having a contact history of tb and she is present cla presenting classically with cough with two months loss of weight loss of appetite evening rise of temperature what tells could be the cause what tells could be the cause definitely i am damn sure it should be tuberculosis so i am going to say to my examiner that my case is a case of an right sided mild to moderate pleural effusion with okay mostly secondary to tuberculous etiology so this is what anatomical pathological etiological diagnosis right after this now the patient now the examiner will go inside some questions so now right now i have given in the entire gist how a pleural effusion case will be there from up to down okay what are the histories then what will be the relevance of histories and now the examiner will go to the questions he can ask questions from anywhere in between example when you are saying he is a name age sex i think everything we discussed in the last class then when you are asking about the symptoms he can stop you and ask about anything about cough anything about breathlessness anything about hemoptysis 
especially when there is a hemoptysis case patient in a tb will have hemoptysis questions will go inside that what are the causes of hemoptysis okay what is the types of hemoptysis what is, what is classical hemoptysis what is pseudo hemoptysis what is uh, uh, spurious hemoptysis what is endemic hemoptysis so these are all the questions asked in hemoptysis why a patient of hemoptysis will die what is called as mild moderate and massive hemoptysis so everything they will ask okay if there is a hemoptysis be ready with these answers okay everything is available in my book all the answers in hemoptysis is available okay next they may ask evening rise why there is an evening rise of temperature in tuberculosis so we know because it is of cortisol levels last class we discussed so they may ask questions regarding that loss of weight loss of appetite okay how will you say whether there is a significant loss of weight all those three criteria is there okay 15% in the 6 months the criteria is there na so we have to say about those criteria then past history then definitely there is a history of an diabetes okay then diabetes is an immunocompromised state so they can go anything about diabetes and ask what are the risk factor for patient is having an uncontrolled sugar this female patient is luckily is not a smoker if suppose he was a male patient is smoker they can ask anything about smoking all the packages everything index everything they can ask anything they can ask history of alcohol if it is there what is the relevance that with tb anything they can ask okay so like this be ready with the questions which is coming in between just you have to develop your knowledge so only i am saying some basic facts you have to be knowing first so which was discussed in our first class that is the introduction part now when you are going inside the case you should be ready to face those questions from the basic facts then again when you are coming to the examination each and everything they can ask you to demonstrate okay show me what is pulses paradoxes how will you demonstrate clubbing what is grade 1 clubbing grade 2 clubbing grade 3 grade 4 demonstrate all these clubbings what are the causes of clubbing nearly 10 to 15 questions are there in clubbing they will ask you pallor ictus everything what are the causes of the pallor in respiratory system ictus in respiratory system if your patient develops ictus what will you think of anything they can ask okay then similarly when you go for the examination each and every examination i will try to post some videos how to examine a respiratory case okay each and every uh, examination they can ask you question okay do palpation and show check for the chest movements look for apical impulse look for the trachea one finger two finger three finger techniques of tracheal palpation okay how will you percuss please show me tidal percussion See, please show me cardiac percussion please show me liver percussion drop space percussion what is drop space everything they can ask similarly in auscultation they can ask anything okay what are the areas of auscultation what is uh, where are the conditions where the breath zone will be decreased because our case breath zone was decreased so where a breath zone will be decreased what are the causes of decreased breath zone what are the causes of absent breath zone what are the causes of unilateral decreased breath zone what are the causes of bilaterally decreased breath zone bilaterally absent breath zone anyway the question can go right vocal resonance you are saying vocal resonance vocal fermitus decrease so they can ask a question what is vocal resonance what is vocal fermitus please say so you should be thorough with the answers example if they ask you what is vocal resonance you should be very spontaneous when a patient is asked to say a monosyllable like 99 the sound which is produced in the vocal cord is transmitted to the chest wall and which is oscillated by a bell of a stethoscope that is called as what vocal resonance similarly vocal fermitus everything is same when a patient is asked to repeat a monosyllable like again like like 99 the sound which is produced in the vocal cord is transmitted to the chest wall which is palpated with an ulnar border of hand that is called as vocal fermitus the questions the answers should be fat 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 clubbing what is clubbing they will ask you should, 100 times definitely these are the questions to be asked in undergraduates man what is clubbing bulbous enlargement of the distal flanges which is due to proliferation of the subacute tissues characterized by obliteration of the angle between the nail and the nail bed so you should be very instantaneous in answers not even having a little flaw are you understanding so in between your entire case all these questions can be asked from anywhere and remember if you are very good in answering these answers you are 100% pass no need to even go inside discussion of pleural vision if you are just crossing this path so smoothly 100% pass okay you won't believe in my post graduation exam in md pulmonology exam when i was attending normally a long case will be 40 minutes 40 minutes i was the only south indian candidate because i was studying in north india okay rest all three were gujaratis all the rest four five people were gujaratis and i was the only person who was from chennai okay i was the first candidate to go in 
one external is from jaipur one external is from mumbai one external is from up and one is my internal sitting from gujarat okay you know the way they asked the questions they nearly ripped me for one and a half hours nearly one and a half 40 minutes is the long case i had been asking they had been asking me questions for nearly one and a half hours okay and you know where did we go my case was in case of an fibro cavity we will discuss about it in later classes fibro cavity you know where i was after one and a half hours i was still in the end of auscultation only so till i was in end of auscultation only history taking to auscultation one and a half hours me alone standing and explaining with the case in front of four examiners all were asking me questions i was answering to all at the end of one and a half hours they were not able to trap me in even only one question then after that my assistant professor from back said that please stop answering and then purposely i did one two mistakes and after that only they left me so that time i found that they should not answer even too much also in fact one two examiners were very happy they gave me a very good mark they gave me a gold medal which is hanging in my home okay that all is there but what i want to say is that that flawless answer should be there i was very keen and i was very sharp to take the question or to take my case presentation in the areas where i was very thorough if they ask me questions about clubbing it is like a laddu to me if they ask questions about inspection palpation percussion it is like having a chicken biryani to me because those are the areas where i am really strong but suppose if i go to some discussion part and get struck in the areas of very uh, dangerous example uh, what are the embryologically which bird it is coming i know but i am not very thorough are you understanding if they go to the ancient histories and ask where was the first pleura diagnosed who was the inventions i am not very thorough so i made sure my case is going flawless and correctly in my direction and the examiners are following along with me and i was answering answering and answering so at the end of one and a half hours i stopped answering i was been given the first mark and a gold medal in my exam i am not saying it for my proudness i am just saying for motivating me okay what is the use of that gold medal nothing it's simply hanging only in home that is uh, different but i am very much equipped now with pulmonology knowledge i am loving the subject now because i read it to the core now i am able to see my patients in my clinic very nicely now i am able to see many cases nicely i am going to i am able to give lot of interviews in televisions in radios clarify without any fear because i know the subject that is what i want that is what i want not the gold medal which is hanging i hope you people understand okay in the next 10 minutes i will be discussing with you some of the important questions which they can ask you in pleural effusion <clears throat> we can make a, uh, make a note they can ask you about embryology of pleura where is the does the pleura develop from they can ask you what is the normal amount of pleural fluid present in the pleura that is at 5 to 15 ml what is the rate of formation of pleural fluid okay 0.6 ml per hour or 0.01 ml per kg per hour everything is there see this is i'm just showing you this is my book okay rs by rs respiratory system by ravichandra sabrinath i had discussed all the cases in this with all the answers okay so no need to worry ayyo you sir is not saying the answer everything is there in the book but the way i am motivating you and sharing my experience is what this video going to say the way to read pulmonology the love towards the subject that you cannot get in my book i am not able to throw that feelings in my book i can just throw the facts each and every fact how much difficult i collected i only know i am giving you like a laddu to you you have to just eat it but please please know the subject properly love it and then eat it otherwise it will get forgotten are you understanding right so those questions can be asked then they can ask you what are the different forms of effusion transurative and exurative what are the different mechanisms of formation of pleural fluid from where the pleural fluid is formed from where it is absorbed all these questions they can ask you from the basic part then transurative exurative definitely please everybody remember about lights criteria each and every student must be thorough with lights criteria what is lights criteria definitely this question is going to come to you so pleural fluid protein divided by serum protein if it is more than 0.5 pleural fluid ldh divided by serum ldh more than 0.6 pleural fluid ldh more than 2/3 of the upper limit of the serum ldh out of these three even if any one point is positive the fluid is exudative this is the lights criteria please be thorough even at night they wake up and say you should be knowing apart from this what you should know what are the causes of transurative effusion what are the causes of exudative effusion 
what are the causes of right sided effusion what are the causes of left sided effusion okay so they can ask you questions even like this they say that trachea is shifted to the opposite side in a massive effusion if the patient is having a moderate or massive effusion but trachea is not shifted trachea is in center what are the causes what are the causes of pleural effusion with central trachea very important question so you have to answer like this bilateral pleural effusion minimal pleural effusion loculated pleural effusion so these are the answers understanding so similarly a lot of questions can come if there's a patient of pleural effusion having clubbing what will you think of i will be thinking of empyema okay the effusion will be an empyema causing clubbing or i will be thinking of an malignant pleural effusion malignancy lung cancer is a cause of an clubbing so this should be your answer understood then like this many basic questions they can ask you what are the drugs causing pleural effusion okay what are the uh, what to say does radiation causes pleural effusion okay lot of questions lot of questions uh, nearly i have put nearly 140 150 questions on pleural effusion in my book so everywhere in this areas they can be asking you the questions okay then uh, all the examination but i already said then in the percussion one important they will ask what is garland's triangle what is gorokos triangle garland's triangle just above the pleural effusion gorokos triangle opposite paraspinal area please be thorough with garland's gorokos triangle they can ask you in the exam clear right above the area of pleural effusion what will be the percussion percussion node called as scodiac resonance okay that is called as scodiac resonance scodiac resonance okay please be thorough suppose if the patient is having a right sided pleural effusion will liver dullness be elicited it is difficult to elicit the liver dullness why because it will be continuous the dullness of the pleural effusion will continue with the liver dullness so we cannot differentiate if the pleural effusion is in left side what will be the trop space trop space will be obliterated all these are questions very important questions okay once they ask the question to my senior shifting dullness you know what is the shifting dullness right example this is a bottle okay dull now you are making like this and percussing now the dull has become resonant again you are conforming by bringing to the normal position that is shifting dullness they asked in pleural effusion comment on the shifting dullness so what did our person say shifting dullness is present then the examiner say demonstrate he did it did not come then what the answer then he said and then my senior said no sir it will not come so please understand the concept in pleural effusion there is no place for the fluid to shift freely as in case of hydropneumothorax this is classical hydropneumothorax fluid air fluid hydro okay air pneumo hydropneumothorax here it will easily shift but in pleural effusion the space is very less to shift freely that means what sir that means you are trying to say in case of pleural effusion the shifting dullness will not be there i am not saying that i am saying in pleural effusion shifting dullness will be there but it will take long time to shift that means the immediate shifting of pleural fluid will not be there whereas in hydropneumothorax there will be immediate shifting of the fluid within 10 seconds to 20 seconds whereas in pleural effusion shifting of fluid takes nearly about 20 minutes your long case itself is 40 minutes in that you have to take from name history past history personal history everything and you have to come till examination you have to come till differential diagnosis when out of the 40 minutes 20 minutes you will spend only for shifting dullness na remaining 20 minutes will have will you do all these things so say to your examiner pleural effusion shifting there is no any immediate shifting of pleural fluid this is what you have to answer in shifting dullness so what does it mean immediately it is not shifting that means it is pleural effusion if immediately shifting is there it is hydropneumothorax hope you understand so these are the concepts breakthrough everything will be there in the book many facts will be there in the book but such a concept breakthrough and developing and building a knowledge will not be there in a book which i am decoding to you understood so after this many questions is there like how will you investigate a case what will you do i will do an chest skyogram that is chest x ray then they will put a chest x ray they will ask you to explain you have to explain this is a digital chest x ray pa view you have to explain all the points okay when well, they adequately exposed there is no any rotation okay soft tissue is normal trachea is in the midline there is an uh, homogeneous soft tissue opacity in the 
right sided lower zones with blunting of the right costophrenic angle most probably looking like an pleural diffusion this is the exact radiological description of that chest x ray so this all how to explain is there in my book but you should have a practice of putting and explaining and explaining are you understanding then they will ask uh, if then x ray if if then x ray there is a diffusion okay the blunting of cp angle how much is the amount of fluid very remember remember five points clinically example now my patient i am able to see the decreased breath sound correct that means the amount of pleural effusion is 500 ml clinically if you are finding positive findings for effusion 500 ml is there inside whereas if there is a cp angle costophrenic angle blunting that means how much 200 ml okay then lateral decubitus the x ray view of choice okay once in neat exam they asked the question what is the investigation of choice for diagnosing pleural effusion all answered x ray lateral decubitus view answer is wrong why the investigation of choice for diagnosing pleural effusion is ultrasound thorax usg thorax whereas the x ray view of choice is lateral decubitus are you understanding the x ray view of choice because lateral decubitus can detect even 100 ml of fluid whereas ultrasound thorax can detect even 50 ml of fluid normal amount of fluid is only 5 to 15 ml so normal amount 15 ml ultrasound thorax 50 ml lateral decubitus how much 100 ml then chest x ray pa view blunting of cp angle 200 ml clinically 500 ml these values you should be thorough understood so a lot of points like this will be keep on going i'm just decoding some important points then you have to know everything about tuberculous pleural effusion what is that how much how will be the <coughs> ada in the tuberculosis how will be the ldh okay glucose proteins how much will be the variations everything you must know similarly they will be asking you about if it is a malignant they will ask about malignant pleural effusion how are you going to treat it what is pleurodesis very important questions what is pleurodesis what is chemical pleurodesis what is mechanical pleurodesis okay when will you tap the fluid how much amount of fluid you can tap in one setting that is 1500 ml if more amount of fluid you are tapping what will happen it will lead to re eep that is re expansion pulmonary edema what is the tra- treatment of choice for re expansion pulmonary edema ippv that is intensive positive pressure ventilation like this the questions will be keep on going okay i know it is very difficult to discuss pleural effusion in this 30 minutes 40 minutes time but i hope i had given an entire gist a okay, lot of more questions are there i agree many more questions are there but we cannot discuss all the questions in one setting <coughs> it comes so only they are keeping in two months uh, two months they are giving uh, posting for general medicine in first year you are in second year you are going in third year one rotation you are going in again in final year two months you are nearly four months you are in general medicine right so this four months is given for this only to discuss all these things again and again so that each and every time new new points are been added so all the points i cannot vomit out now okay it is difficult for me also so my friends and students hope you enjoyed the class hope you understood the concept of pleural effusions so i know many more questions are go are there to go okay but please take this as a gist as a motivation and you please uh, go further with these basic concepts okay everything answers and the questions are available in my book once again i'm saying okay and even a uh, lot of uh, pictures <coughs> lot of videos i am putting in my youtube channel sabrina tramchandar my instagram dr pandalogist my youtube rs by rs that is respiratory system by ravichandra sabrina that is my youtube channel okay i am i am used to post all the awareness videos x rays interesting x rays interesting ct scans everything in my insta my facebook and youtube so that you can understand different different concepts like how to read x ray how to take a dry powder inhaler how to take an uh, mdi meter dose inhaler what is the use of peak expiratory flow rate different different types of x rays so everything knowledge you can share from there also okay so these are the different platforms and my book is also there to help you it is exclusive for clinical pulmonology okay so i thank one and all for listening this video with humble patience if i would have talked in angry tone or if i would have uh, used some words unparliamentary words okay kindly forgive me my intention was not to use uh, or to say something in a flow of speaking in everybody has got a style my style is like this okay i don't know whoever is watching this video but it is never to hurt you or depress you okay or say something that i am very good nothing like that just sharing of knowledge you people also should get motivated and read and you should become a good doctor okay because everybody is going to do service for this 
mankind okay so that is all my concept is okay all the best uh, my dear students okay so you can post any queries if you have uh, in the insta uh, messenger okay and uh, take a leave okay thank you